Okay. All right, there we go. I see that recording is happening. So today's virtual career Tuesday uh, being brought to you live from everyone's uh, garage, kitchen, living room <laughs> is actually being hosted by Lockheed Martin um, and their headquarters are in Bethesda, Maryland, excuse me. They're a global security and aerospace company uh, that employs approximately 110,000 people worldwide and is principally engaged in research, design, development, manufacturing, integration, sustainment, and technology systems, product, and services. So today, she graduated from Towson University with an accounting degree in the spring of 2016. I like to be able to say that it was an accounting degree. And she joined Lockheed Martin uh, in 2019, and she's the program financial analyst uh, on United States programs. Yikes. Mm -hmm. So there you Beautiful. go. I also have Brian Kroll, um, and he uh, is the campus recruiter, and he's been with Lockheed Martin since 2019. He's 100% remote and is currently based outside of Philadelphia, PA. He actually went to Valley Forge, uh, and I don't mind saying 2008 was his graduation year. So welcome, Brian. <laughs> Thank you very much. Great to be here. Yeah. yeah. So I have some questions canned and put together uh, for the students that have joined us. Thank you all very much. You'll have an opportunity to go ahead and ask some questions uh, in the chat box, but until we uh, that point, Becca and Brian, do you have anything that you want to start us off with? And then I'll lead in with my questions. It's excited to be here and, and answer all the questions. Great. Yeah. I just want to say thank you very much and thank you to Becca for joining. Mm -hmm. And thank you to you all. Very excited. There you go. So one of uh, the key questions, obviously, at this particular um, standpoint is really about our our economy, right, and uh, the market today and how fluid everything is. So we all know competitive. What does the ideal candidate look like on paper or perhaps even in person for a position within Lockheed? Brian or Becca, either one of you want to jump in? I'll let Becca go ahead and take the first uh, question as far as how it relates to her uh, field. Sure. So I'm sure Brian and I probably have a different perspective of what an ideal candidate looks like. Um, I know actually when I applied to Lockheed that, you know, I didn't technically meet all the requirement boxes uh, for the job posting that I was applying for. And, you know, through the interview process, when you actually sit down and talk to a manager and you talk about your skills and, and all the different things that you've worked on or, you know, going through college, the coursework you've taken, things you've been uh, active in, um, you know, sometimes you don't necessarily need to fulfill every single little checkbox uh, on the application. So an ideal candidate, I would say someone who's well rounded, you know, you have an open mind, you probably have good communication skills, written and verbal. Um, something that, you know, we do all the time, especially now virtually, you're constantly in communication, either on video or in um, email, chat, you know, you also have to remember it's a professional setting. So you want to be mindful of those uh, soft skills as well as your technical skills. So, you know, <laughs> paying attention in class, you know, try to get those good grades and um, really just being a part of a community and, you know, being involved on campus never hurts. We like to see people who are uh, interested in things outside of your coursework because we do think it makes a more well-rounded person and you know, we like to have lives outside of work, so we hope that you have lives outside of school as well. Brian, do you, you have anything to add from the recruiter standpoint? Yes, absolutely. I think she she definitely hit the nail on the head there, uh, specifically, uh, and did wonderful. And I'm just going to add a couple things. You know, as far as what a student's perspective and what we are looking for, you can look at specifics on the job position itself, as far as what those skills are, what the degree is. Uh, it, those are listed on each of the jobs that you're looking for. So you can kind of use those. It, let's say you're a freshman or early on your college career, unsure what you want to do or unsure of what courses even to take sometimes. You can use these job descriptions to kind of help you understand, okay, this is what this job is looking for. I need to kind of go in that direction or learn those things or take those courses. 
Um, so really reviewing those jobs and the job description can really help you a long way. Uh, and you can use that to, to help you. Um, you know, we're always looking for individuals that are committed to the ethics and integrity or mission motivated. Uh, they're very passionate about solving problems, uh, creative. Um, you know, we're looking for this teamwork, the team player as well. As, as you said, as we said, you know, we're, we're working together to solve a problem. Um, you know, and we have positions where you kind of just go to your cube, you do your thing, you go home. But, you know, we're really looking for individuals that want to work together to achieve that goal and to achieve what we're trying to do. Um, and then also, specifically for Lockheed Martin, we want to see folks that are passionate about Lockheed Martin. Um, I mean, everybody wants a job, everybody wants an internship, everyone, you know, wants to be hired, but, you know, we, we want someone who is passionate specifically about Lockheed Martin. You've done a little bit of research, you looked at the job site, you've looked into the different business areas, you know, maybe you attended several events, you've made some, some, some good connections with some Lockheed folks or maybe some current interns. Um, but you are passionate specifically about Lockheed Martin. I think that that's some of the things that we're looking for in potential candidates. So, Brian, I'm going to um, ask you to maybe elaborate a little bit about what are some of the roles um, that are open currently at Lockheed. I know you provided that information to me, and we had a discussion certainly about um, posting on our site, but obviously. Um, through Lockheed, individuals are certainly welcome to go ahead and search for that information, but maybe you could elaborate a little bit more about what some of the current roles and some, some of those positions are that are open right at this time. Sure, absolutely. Um, we, uh, like she, like you said, Susan, they, the company is over 110,000 employees, so it is somewhat difficult to know all of the open positions that we have. <laughs> so uh, I would love to answer that, but it's, it's, it's pretty difficult. I can say, However, that you know, last summer we hired over 2,600 interns across the board. We hired over 3,000 full-time new hire grads. Um, you know, the various different types of positions can vary between business, finance, engineering, um, HR, corporate, um, you know, supply chain management. There's so many different marketing communications that you know we are so involved in many different aspects, and there's so many different functions that that are, help us achieve our goals, uh, it's difficult to kind of pinpoint specifics. Um, I don't know if Becca is able to, to talk about some of the more FMBO positions that she's related um, and working with and is aware of. Um, and again, she might not know of specifics that she is looking for uh, in in her area, but she might talk about some of the things in FMBO or positions she is aware of. Yeah, so I actually, I haven't recently looked at entry level positions uh, that we have posted, but generally all the time. Program finance is a really big one. Uh, that's essentially what I do. So it's doing uh, the financial analysis and basically keeping a program afloat, uh, which rolls up into the greater uh, FP&A side of the business. So, you know, every program that Lockheed Martin works on affects how the business performs. Um, so I want to say we're definitely always hiring for that. And the programs, you know, I'm on Coast Guard, but I have a friend who works, um, you know, the U.S. Navy, the U.S. Marines, um, there's international jobs. So the the jobs can span far and few between. Um, we also have positions that are related to uh, the financial planning and analysis. There's independent cost ed estimating, um, planning, program planning. Um, there's really, you know, I can keep going down the list, but there's a wide range of uh, F and BO opportunities that, you know, if you do your research, you, you maybe you're interested in program finance, but you're also a little bit interested in planning. Um, you know, those opportunities can happen. So definitely uh, take a look at our website. Um, I'm sure Brian will probably send it out, if not Susan, um, for all the open positions that we currently have. And take a look at what sparks your interest the most, because, you know, I started in public accounting, so I, you know, I don't even do accounting anymore. Um, but I loved every second of program finance. So you never really know what's going to pique your interest and definitely a good idea to explore all the different avenues. So just by acronyms, can you tell us uh, F and BO? What that stands for? Finance oh, and business operations. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure that uh, for those that perhaps there's freshmen that are online, and you know what, some of the acronyms might not be uh, easily recognizable. So I appreciate that. Sure. Thank you for so that, Susan. We're we're a world of acronyms over here. So. <laughs> I don't well, even know, you know what, what all the acronyms are. 
<laughs> you're not alone. I have to tell you that that was a conversation that the team had yesterday. So yes, we're all uh, all trying to figure this out as we we move on. So let's talk a little bit about mind. Maybe you could elaborate about the interviewing process and what does it look like. Um, and do you have a variety of formats that you utilize, or do you depend on specific hiring managers for different units? Um, just whatever information you could go ahead and share with our students so that they have a better sense of what the interview process would look like for them. Either one of you. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's not, Becca, do you want to talk about your interview process and I can kind of talk about in general and the differences and that we might be experiencing in COVID? Yes. So, I mean, my experience, I was an experienced hire. I was not straight out of college when I came to Lockheed. So mine might be a little bit different than what the students would be going through. Um, but essentially, you browse the, the opportunity online, figure out what you want to apply for, fill out the application form, you upload your resume, and it would go through. Um, each program has specific hiring managers, so it would not just be one focal point. Is my understanding, Ryan, that you know, it's not one person across the entire business that would be doing the hiring. It's very program and uh, function specific. Uh, so once your resume would, uh, would be reviewed, you would either be offered an interview or you would not. Um, hopefully you would get an interview. And with that, uh, Lockheed Martin is, you know, we do use the STAR method in, um, in interviewing, which is situation, task, results, and um, or action and results. Uh, my interview not, was not necessarily star method, so it's kind of dependent on the hiring manager, how they conduct their interview, um, and you know how their team is sort of based. Um, and then with that, uh, you know, hopefully you'd be extended an offer. And if not, definitely seek feedback for uh, what you could do in your next time applying. Um, but you know that's how it went for me, Brian. I don't know if you know if there's a little bit more specifics or anything different that would be for an entry level position. Absolutely. So I think there are parallels for both. Um, let's talk about you know how it may look for interviews for entry level, um, specifically with COVID. So there's various different ways that you can apply. Well, you can you can obtain an interview. Let's say. So the most important, and you have to do this. You have to apply. Without applying. Not, it's not going to go anywhere. So you must apply to positions. Positions are posted at the beginning of September. And those are for the beginning of next summer, a few for December, January start, uh, but for the most part is for next summer. Um, sometimes depending on the clearance level, depending on what you're doing, it might be even for uh, 2022, 2023, because sometimes clearances take that long, uh, depending again, what you might be doing within the company. Uh, we'd rather have you hired and accept the position as maybe possibly a junior. And then we start that clearance process. So by the time that you are a senior and you graduate, that clearance is done, you're ready to go. You don't have to wait anymore. You start working. So uh, you need to apply first and foremost. So your resume and your application will go through into our system. And there's various different steps that, that it goes through. So there's an applicant tracking system. We do have that. It's an automated computer system that kind of filters out and goes through resumes. And many, many, many companies use an applicant tracking system. However, Lockheed Martin does use actual real human sources to look at your resumes, which a lot of companies do not. So these are folks that are looking just at your skills, your graduation date, your degree, and see if it matches what you applied for. And from there, it might go to a recruiter. And again, they're looking for many of the similar things, or maybe they are aware of other positions, other open positions that they can move your applicant application and your resume to that other job. You may not have applied to that other job. You might not even know that the other job exists, but we do, and we're gonna move you on over to that. So that's another step in the process. And then from there, it might be reviewed by a hiring manager, or it might be reviewed by several hiring managers or reviewed by several different recruiters. So your status might say resume review under review, but it might remain there for a while, and it might be reviewed by 20, 30 different people. So it's not to say your, your application is ever stuck. It's not to say your resume is ever stuck. It's continually being reviewed and, and looked at through multiple different folks, through multiple different managers, multiple different business areas. So from there, once your resume is reviewed, gets to the point of a hiring manager review, you might be uh, reached out to by a recruiter to set up an interview. And at this point, it will most likely either be by phone or by Zoom because we're in this virtual world now. So just underwear, you know, be aware of those uh, situations of, of 
proper Zoom etiquette or WebEx etiquette, making sure that everything's appropriate and every, whatever's behind you is okay. Uh, be prepared for that. So that's kind of the process that your application or resume goes through. So understand it's not necessarily stuck at any point, but also don't be afraid to just, don't be afraid to apply to more than one position. It does not make you look bad to apply to more than one position, so long as you're applying to positions that are relevant to you and what your skills and what your degree is. So be aware. So I'll ahead. actually build on that too. If you are applying to more than one position, even if you're just applying to one, you really wanna make sure your resume is tailored to that position. I mean, don't exaggerate, you know, definitely don't lie on your resume, but you know, if there's buzzwords or keywords that you see in the job posting, it's a good idea to try to use some of those within your resume. And if you're applying to do different job functions, you know, one blanket resume might not really get looked at in one other function without actually tailoring it to that specific role that you're applying to. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's kind of the uh, the process in which your application goes through and the interview process. Um, I'm gonna add, 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 add a part of that in that because we're so virtual now, we're doing many, many events. Now we like to come on campus as often as possible because I like to see people. <laughs> Um, I like to be on campus, but you know, we can't right now. So we're doing many, many virtual events. So you can attend this today, which is a great, great example of connecting with somebody for Lockheed, two folks from Lockheed. Uh, we have many other events that are being advertised on Handshake on um, by signing up to our um, job site, by connecting with campus recruiters on LinkedIn, uh, many various different places that you can uh, get, be informed of these virtual events and you can attend them East Coast, event, West Coast event, mountain event. And you can attend all the events you want because they're not specific to your location and you're not stuck to your location. And many of our events are tied to hiring. So we are leaning towards hiring folks who attended our events, um, more so than just kind of an, a random name. So if, we, if you came to an event, you showed interest in Lockheed Martin, you took the time and effort to attend that event and engage. So that makes, that, that's obviously someone we would choose a little bit over someone who just kind of went to the job site and applied randomly. Um, so we're leaning more towards hiring those folks who did attend, and we are pulling names from those folks who attended and potentially hiring those as well. So you might not know if you attend an event, if there's a hiring manager, we're, we're, not, we're not hiring managers, I just want to say that out right now. But other events, you, we, you, there might be a hiring manager who attended that event who is specifically looking to look to hire you know, 10, five people or whatever for their team, but you don't know that you, you know, you're there for that event. So really attend as many as you can, meet as many Lockheed folks as you can and start applying to, uh, to positions that really are of interest of you. And that's really gonna promote you and push you along further than some other folks who maybe just apply to, to one position and didn't really attend any events. So hopefully that long-winded answer was okay. <laughs> no, it was great. I I want to kind of build on that just even a little bit more. I mean, one of the things that you just mentioned was, you know, obtaining a list and, and uh, having students go ahead and do some outreach as well. So I want to use this opportunity for the students to recognize that there's a participant list. You have the, the recruiter's name and you have Becca's name right there on the page. This is the perfect opportunity for you to go ahead and do some outreach through LinkedIn. So you can remind them when you go ahead and do the connect of how you uh, did your outreach or how you're doing your outreach or why that you attended a virtual career Tuesday event through the University of Connecticut School of Business and you attended this information session. So I think it's just an opportunity for me. I want to make sure that I shared with the students that these this is why these opportunities and these programs are so important for you to attend. And I'm Brian, I think it's really wonderful that you went ahead and, you know, made that announcement and shared that information because oftentimes I think we overlook what our connection and our networking opportunities are and how easily it how easy it is to to network and engage, but oftentimes we find it as maybe a little bit of a stumbling block instead of becoming uh an easier situation. So yeah, Absolutely. thank you for sharing that. I wanna go ahead and ask you a little bit about what your thoughts are, and perhaps you don't really have the information at this point in time, but you've referred multiple times to this COVID environment. So for students that are thinking of maybe uh, an intern, really important when they're applying for a position, 
In other words, if they're knowing that they want their location to be just like you in Pennsylvania, do you think that it's appropriate for them to restrict their um, their level of engagement or not even apply for a position because perhaps maybe the, the job wouldn't be located in that location or you're gonna be virtual next summer, next fall? How, how are you progressing with that? Uh, well, thank you so much. I just want to back up real quick and touch on that networking part of it. And I want to put okay. in a link, if I could. Um, so anyone who attended today, if they want to register with us as well to create that profile, just to let us know that you attended today and you can create that profile and upload, upload your resume. That's super grateful for us, um, super grateful on our end that you did that. Just to let us know, hey, you attended and you're interested in Lockheed Martin. Uh, just put the link in the chat there. I see it. Thank you so much. Great. And to answer the question as far as location, um, it, as far as an internship, we always encourage folks to be open to all locations. And then we understand that everybody is different and you have family of different things going on that you can't. Uh, however, you know, being early in your career and being open to all locations for an internship is super, super important because it, it exposes you to different people, different environment, different experiences that you may not get otherwise. Uh, it will open up many, many, many hundreds, if not maybe thousands of more opportunities than it would be to just keeping it into one location. Um, so being open to that, to, to more locations will open up more opportunities. Uh, it just, that's just the math of it. So I highly encourage you to do that. Lockheed Barton does pay for your internship. They pay for your relocation, uh, financial assistance. Uh, they have internship support groups. So you're not just kind of going into your internship whether it's local or, or, or away, alone. Uh, so you have a Facebook group for in, new interns to join. Um, they do supporting, uh, supporting events to help you navigate a new, a new town or a new city. Uh, they do help you find uh, housing. They're not gonna give you housing or tell you where to live, but they will support you to find those things. Uh, so as far as internships specifically, be open to, lo to locations, especially if you really wanna get your foot into the Lockheed Martin yeah, will really help you a long, long way. As far as full time, you know, you might be more specific in where you have to live or you want to live. But again, I encourage you to be open to to new locations, uh, just to get your foot in the door. Uh, Lockheed Martin does support you to move uh, once you kind of get up and, and running and into your position. Uh, they support you to 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 grow in your career professionally, as well as support you if you need to to relocate and things like that. Yeah, as so I'll actually. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Gonna, the last thing was about COVID. Um, I'm not sure, you know, what that's going to look like. I know, unfortunately, um, we were grounded as far as me. I, I was grounded um, the end of March, and that's probably going to continue till next fall, unfortunately. Um, I, I, I'm i sick of being in my house, and I want to get to UConn and all the <laughs> other schools I support. But, unfortunately, this is the, the world that we live in now. Um, you know, as far as how that internship or or, or new position will, will look like next summer, again, I'm not sure, but we are doing everything we can to make it safe for everybody, uh, considering what is going on. Yeah, so the only other thing that I'm going to add to that is I actually, when I was looking at Lockheed Martin, I was located in Baltimore, Maryland, and I applied for a job up in Morristown, New Jersey, uh, and relocated and was, you know, Lockheed did give me financial assistance in my move uh, with my offer letter. Um, so you're definitely not limited to, you know, if you're open to moving out to Colorado, apply to Colorado jobs. But the other thing I'll say is some of our job postings actually do include multiple locations because they either they're not required you to be in person all the time um, or we just have staff that are generally just spaced out. So. Um, I actually just took a new job within the company and I have locations with Morristown, New Jersey. I have um, DC, Washington, DC, and there's actually a location out in uh, Marinette, Wisconsin. So, you know, we have people on the same one program that are across the country. So it's definitely not limiting uh, by choosing different locations or going wherever you're interested in living. Great, thank you, and congratulations on your new position. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't so, know either. congrats. <laughs> <laughs> Happened today, so. <laughs> oh, congrats! Yay. Thank you. <laughs> so, I want to be mindful. I know that we have um, actually a couple of student questions that I can see, um, and then 
if you have any in the waiting that you want to as well. But um, we have a student question that is, what are the key values of Lockheed's company culture that keeps you engaged and invested in the company's mission? Uh -huh. Maybe that's a little bit of a thinker. <laughs> Either one of you, Becca or Brian. I know we have, I don't know them off the top of my head. I'm going to try to <laughs> cheat here. But so we do maybe. have a good mission statement. And oh my gosh, now my dog's going to bark. Um, so, Brian, if you want to start, uh, if you can, while I tame him. <laughs> yes, because now I'm put on the spot and I forget what they are now, too. <laughs> I think okay. Totally our, our core values are <laughs> uh, do what's right, respect others, and perform with excellence. And our motto, our motto currently is our mission is yours. Um, and I can certainly speak to all of those things. And we you know we strive to do what is right. Um, and we are embracing a, a culture of accountability program across the board of a new way of approaching and solving problems and working together as a team. So, and a, a huge part of that is respecting others and where they come from and their perspectives. Um, and the performance with excellence, you know, we we strive to perform with excellence, you know, and we have a high uh, accuracy or success level of the projects that we complete. I think it's 99, it's 90 something percent of uh, projects that we complete are successful um, in various different business areas. And as far as the, um, the, the mission, uh, a motto, our mission is yours, uh, they can true. I can truly attest to that. And there are so many possibilities with Lockheed Martin that you're never stuck with where you're at. If you want to really expand and grow, they support that fully. Um, I came from a, an environment was very kind of cutthroat, tippy toe. You got to watch who you talk to and what you want to do in a, a corporate function outside uh, Philadelphia. But in Lockheed, you know, I came on board and I said, these are my personal goals. These are my professional goals. I said, you know, I want to be successful. I want to work with these schools, but also I want to snowboard in Colorado. I live outside of Philly and I've never been snowboarding out West. I said, okay, here's two Philly schools. Here's two Colorado schools. Bring your board. You'll be out there twice a month. So like, it sounds silly, but like they really do. Their mission is yours. And it, it was a personal silly goal that doesn't matter. It's Lockheed doesn't care about that, but they did. They wanted me to achieve what I wanted to achieve both personally and professionally. So Hopefully, it answered the question as far as what the motto was and what our goals, core goal, core values are. Excellent. Well, thank you. And Becca, on the spot, but if you have something to add, feel free at this particular point in time. Hopefully, you've wrangled that dog. We can't hear it, so I think it all yes. is well. <laughs> he has his moments. Um, yeah. So, kind of on that, with our mission is yours too. We actually offer leadership development programs as well. Uh, so, right now, I'm currently in the early career development program, which is designed for our incoming employees uh, for experience of new hire through about two years, where you're really getting your feet wet uh, within the company and we're integrating you into all these different uh, trainings and experiences um, really to get you acclimated with just the company, but also with um, different job functions that are available. Because like Brian said, you know, they really encourage you to, to expand your career how you want to expand it. Uh, so you're really not stuck in one position your entire career if you don't want to be. You certainly can if you love your job that much, like definitely stay where you are. But you know, it's really encouraged also to, if you want to move into a different finance uh, role, you should absolutely pursue that. Um, and so there's the finance leadership development program, which would be the next step after the early career program, where you would apply in and it's a three-year program with one-year rotational opportunities. So every year of those three, you would be in a new job function, uh, whether it's one you've already done and you just want to see a new program, or if you want to go to a different uh, role, such as like contracts or pricing or anything like that. So you really, you know, there's no limitation when you come to work here. And just to clarify, you were in your position full time for a year before you're able to apply for that. Yes, I've uh, so for the finance leadership development, you need uh, two years of experience to be able to apply into it. So, you know, once you graduate from the early career program, it sort of sets you up to be able to apply into the finance leadership development program. Great, great. So I also. Um, 
want to make sure that I go ahead and uh, I see that there's another question or maybe it's a statement. Thank you for taking the time to meet with us and give us some of your insights. What are a couple of your biggest personal achievements while working at Lockheed Martin? And thanks, Timothy, for putting that question out there. Thank you. I, it's kind of hard. You know, it's not necessarily measured in, um, you know, there's milestones absolutely that you can hit in your career. Um, but personal achievements also can be measured in a lot of different ways. So for me, actually, on, on Coast Guard programs, um, when I came on, there was completely not even a system for tracking cash and uh, following up on outstanding cash payments. So we had invoices that were outstanding since 2014. So I was still in college. So th these have just been ignored essentially for six years. So a personal achievement of mine was the fact that I've been able to push and get them, some of them paid. And, you know, the business looks at that. They see the cash turnover. So it's a it's a good position for the business to be in once we can receive cash instead of writing things off. So like that to me was a personal achievement. Um, but then, you know, another achievement is the fact that I did just get hired for a new position and it's actually a promotional position. So now I get to say, like, I'm a next level up. So, you know, positions and achievements really just it's kind of how you measure it and and how you want to to pursue your career in a sense. Nice. Nice. Anything you'd like to add? As far as personal achievement, at least it's right now, it's just being hired by Lockheed Martin, honestly. Um, you know, I, I like that I, I came on, Thank you. <laughs> I came on board, yeah, as a contract recruiter last June, and then within three or four months, I got a full-time uh, position. So I'm still kind of learning that position. It takes a good year or two to really learn a position, I would say. And um, I'm just, I'm just thrilled to to be working with Lockheed and working in a position such as this and working with the schools that I work with, honestly. Great, great. Uh, question, Hakeem said, how's the diversity? Uh, how would you describe the culture um, at LM? So those are two separate questions, Timothy and Hakeem. One is about diversity and the other one is describe the culture. You wanna take this back up? Sure, I mean, I work with the, it kind of depends on how you define diversity. Uh, you know, I think the big one that people think of is different cultures, um, you know, we work with brilliant, brilliant people. So it's it's something that is, you know, completely just, it blows my mind sometimes um, <laughs> how diverse <laughs> that we are because, you know, um, but then, you know, you can also think of diversity as, you know, people are working from the office, people are working remotely. Um, it, it's all different sort of dynamics, different teams, different dynamics, different, you know, Everything is different. Um, no one team, I would say, is alike, but that's not a bad thing. Um, you know, my my team specifically, we do things like picnics together every once in a while um, and happy hours, things like that to really just take time outside of work to get to know each other, to, you know, de-stress from work, essentially. Um, so it's a very relaxed, but also encouraging culture to be around because you know sort of like our values like we want to do what's right we want to uh, perform with excellence so really like having those as the ground values um every team i would say i mean i'm limited to my coast guard knowledge right now because that's the only team that i've been on but it's been nothing short of great with the people that i've gotten to meet and encounter um you know i'm working with people who you know not to call anybody out, but like could literally be like older than my parents. So, you know, you're also getting a <laughs> wide range of people who have years and years of knowledge uh, on on Lockheed Martin. Like I'm actually a third generation in my family to come to Lockheed. My grandfather, my great uncle were employees here. So, you know, it's it's really awesome to see that so many people who work here have such a history working here that, you know, it is a culture in itself. Excellent. I think that's, I think that's fantastic. And the, the, the diversity can can encompass many different things for sure. Um, you know, we we have a huge focus on diversity. We have an entire department focused solely on diversity, uh, working with student uh, diversity student organ organizations, 
uh, diversity um, department heads uh, with Lockheed, uh, with the different schools. Um, within Lockheed Martin itself, you know, similar to the schools have different student organizations like SWE, NSBE, SHIP, SACE, different things like that. Uh, Lockheed Martin has the like the, the professional version of those things. So when women in women in oh, now I forget what it is, uh, but the women, women in business. Uh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> so there's those versions, but like the professional version of them. So if you want support groups, you have those within Lockheed Martin, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And like I had never heard of that until I came here. Um, as far as diversity goes, you know, women prevalent within Lockheed Martin. It's not it's all it's not all guys, you know, um, even in the engineering field. Perfect example, Marilyn Houston, you know, one of the most powerful women in Forbes magazine, different things like that. You know, she was up until recently uh, for many years, our CEO and president of Lockheed Martin. Uh, very, very amazing, amazing woman. Um, you know, my team is led by uh, my managers, a woman, my director, a woman, um, you know, very, very diverse group uh, within Lockheed Martin. And we, we really focus on that because we don't want a bunch of the same people trying to solve a problem because we're just going to get the same results. And you know, we really need creative, different insights from different people from different backgrounds and different experiences to really come together to achieve the goal and solve the problem. And we can't do that with everybody thinking the same and having the same experience. Uh, so we extremely, we really, really value diversity within Lockheed Martin. And we have the support groups, the professional support groups along with that. And as far as culture, um, it's a large company. There's no getting around that. You know, it's over 110,000 people. I was so overwhelmed a little bit when I came in. I'm like, how, how, there's over, how, I don't even know it. What, how am I going to know these people? I don't know. And within the large company, you have smaller families, smaller teams. And then your team is so supportive. I've been on two different teams now, but I work with countless other teams in working on at, at the schools. And our teams are so diverse and they're so supportive and they're so, and they're so it's like a little family. It really is. Um, and as far as that culture, you know, the culture really is you're going to work hard and we're going to achieve that goal. But at the same time, you, the, 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 there's a focus on you and what is important to you and, and you feeling safe and being safe in your priorities. So if you have family stuff going on, you need to take time off. You need to do what you got to do. They support that. Uh, we currently are off every Friday, every other Friday. Arrow and MFC, I think are off every Friday. And I'm, mm -hmm. I think the majority of the company, I think Space and me, I'm, I'm enter Enterprise Operations, we are moving towards uh, off every Friday as well, which is fantastic. So you work uh, ten, uh, four 10-hour days, but you're off every Friday. And PTO is abundant. <laughs> I cannot use all of my PTO because I can, it's impossible, <laughs> I feel like. Uh, Same. But the culture is really... Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice place to work. I don't know how else to say that. <laughs> great. Great. Well, thank you. Yes. I have more. I just want to sure. Can you tell us about your mentor program and how it helps interns succeed? My friend was an intern at Sikorsky this summer and always talked about how much she loved her mentors. So, yes. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and take this one. Um, so within the early career development program, they do assign you a formal mentor, uh, but that's not to say that you can't have informal mentors as well. One of my coworkers who is my team lead uh, is definitely a great mentor of mine. And she actually just left Coast Guard for another position as well. But, you know, we still talk. I still get to bounce ideas off of her, run, you know, my career aspirations. Um, but then I have my formal mentor that was assigned to me and, you know, He's amazing. I love when I get to talk to him and we just have quarterly standing meetings that just to say, hey, how's it going? Like checking in, like if anything's going on, I can definitely just like mind dump on him or if I just need to talk something through with him. Um, he was really great for helping me when I was applying into the finance leadership development program, uh, you know, with mock interviews and, and reviewing my resume and things like that. So, um, you know, mentors, you can find them anywhere, both assigned and informal. Um, and definitely encourage you, definitely something that I think is really, really valuable to your time, especially when you're navigating early on in your career and you sort of like don't know really where, where you want to go yet and you have your whole career ahead of you. So it's definitely um, a good program that we have 
Um, and I know HR dips into it. So there's a whole um, program set up for it officially. And I know they just, they're trying to roll out um, more, I, I guess I want to call them avenues for how to assign mentors to really make sure you're getting the best person possible to make your career as successful as you want it to be. So I want to be mindful about everybody's time here. Um, so our office is very big up. Uh, whether it's a virtual career fair or even to career Tuesday. So what would be one thing that you would advise students? I know you've already touched on this a little bit, um, but what would advice would you um, provide our students who are seeking a career opportunity right now uh, with Lockheed? What is their must know or anything else that you believe is vitally important? I would say do your research, um, you know, know the company, know what you are applying for. Don't just blindly click on job postings just because, oh, hey, this sounds cool. Uh, you definitely want to know what the business does and sort of what job you're applying for, um, because that's really going to speak volumes. If you've done your research, your interviewer is going to know it. Um, and that's not to say they're just going to sit you down and quiz you during your interview, because I think that's also kind of unrealistic. But, you know, when you're able to pull that knowledge that you have of Lockheed, even though you're still in college, like they're going to be impressed and they're going to it's going to help you stand out if you actually, you know, have taken the time to really understand what the business is about. Great. Brian, what about you? Uh, that was going to be my first answer. <laughs> So okay, thank you. be informed. <laughs> My second answer would be it's never too early to network. And uh, yes. there's never um, uh, there's never a bad person or a wasted person to speak to at a company that you're interested in speaking with. Like, I don't have a business background. I don't have an engineering background. I have a degree. That happened. But <laughs> um, I'm still, you know, everybody can give value to to your search in a job and never take, you know, never take that for granted. It's never too early to start networking. Um, the whole reason I got a job with Lockheed is because I networked for three, four years um, with the same people with Lockheed. And I applied for three or four years before something opened up. But during that time, I continued to do work hard where I was at and, and work and, and just keep those connections, uh, true, honest, genuine connections, not just, hey, who are you? What can you do for me? But Get to know folks on a personal level, make a genuine connection, and continue to check in every once in a while. Excellent, excellent. For those students that are uh, that joined us, thank you so much for taking time to to uh, log in to our virtual Career Tuesday. Um, I want to remind you that we have we meaning the School of Business Career Office has already provided. Um, much information about what jobs are currently posted through Lockheed. Um, I'm just do a, a quick little run through, but in our newsletter that was just distributed, the certainly feel free to reach out to our office. Um, but one of my college current interns posted in Lockheed's job board. So thanks everyone for joining in today, Brian, Becca. It was really great to to finally uh, put a, a face to the to the emails that we've been uh, sending back and forth, and to the students that participated. Thank you. Reach out to your us if there's anything that we can do for you. And uh, I would say enjoy this. Dismind great, but you have a great job already putting your best foot forward networking. So we'll see everybody next time, next Career Tuesday at noon. And uh, everyone take good care. Thanks for joining us. Be well. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Us. Thank you. Great to, see, great to see everybody. Thank you so much for spending some time. Yes.